first one, which is so weird. I don't know why it does that. Everybody ditch their husbands yet? Come on, get to it. We don't need to watch football, we're women. Unless you're really staring at those butts running around on that field. <laughs> that's, that's, yeah, that's what you would be doing. <laughs> Hello, everybody. I'm Tiffany. Welcome to my quilting live. Hey, Sunday. So Sunday, where hopefully you walk away from that football game. And so with me today. <laughs> um, so as you can see in the background, Scott convinced me to work on my snail trail because I didn't have nothing to do and I didn't want to start a new project because I'm leaving and next week, uh, so Sunday is going to be cut kind of short because we have to leave like at two o'clock in the morning or something like that to get to the airport so that I can fly far, far away to the East Coast. So this Sunday, we're just not starting a new project so that we don't have to start nothing next week either and work on it. You know, we're just going to work on something that's already been started and you've seen me worked on before but i only needed seven more blocks so i'm gonna make seven blocks of my snail trail blocks so that i can make snails that see so i finally put it on the wall like this and i need to make seven more blocks and then i need to start making the sashing sections oh yeah it's a block and it's all on my white cotton batting that just so happens to be hanging on the wall. So it's snail trail blocks and I'm making snails at sea. So if you're on your computer, Google snails at sea uh, quilt pattern and you'll get the general idea of what I'm making, except I'm making it out of color. And these are actually scraps from another snail trail project I did a while back that was just a traditional four blocks together thing, no sashing in between. So this is, this won't be fun. <laughs> Because I'm going to use the rest of these, all these pieces, because I only had enough for seven more. Actually, I had to cut some more black, which I don't have. That's one thing I don't have is the matching black. So my sashing black is going to be a different black. It's going to be black, but it, it's going to have a higher contrast, I guess, or higher hue would be the word. So because I don't have the original black that I started with, which I should have looked into before I even started on this project. But... I never did. Anyways, let's see who is all here. And then we'll get to some sewing. We got Shirley, uh, Polly, Scarlett, Miki, Elaine, Winona, Melody, Tracy, Norma, Andrea, Sharon, Kay, Cynthia, Paula, Georgie, Lisa, Peg, Judy, Donna, Marla, Joyce, Tracy, Vicki, Geraldine, and so many, many, many more. Hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm glad you all decided to ditch your husbands and hang out with me. <laughs> I, I totally didn't think about that because today was Super Bowl Sunday and a lot of people sit with their husbands because they have control of the TV instead of you guys. <laughs> so... Uh, I should have named it Ditch Your Husbands and Hang Out With Me is what I should have named today's video, but I didn't. Anyway, so I have seven blocks of pieces laid out here, and I'm just going to sew them. problem with the snail trail block is you can only sew one at a time. I mean, I could probably chain piece each of these sections right here for these three. Maybe I can do all seven, but it would be hard for me to try to keep them in order because, you know, it's... Yeah, you just have to keep adding to it. So I'm going to go ahead and start putting these together. All right, this goes on this side. Anyway, so that's what I'm doing today. Sewing these. I'm using black thread today. And Scott could bring the camera closer now, now that the live stream is on, because I'm going to be doing the same procedure. Actually, let's try it. Let's try to chain piece these. I'm going to be using doing the same procedure over and over again. So black so moving in and yeah, bring it closer. Okay. Will this be your first time flying? This will be my first time fl flying in a big plane. I've never flown in a big plane ever. I've flown in a little, I've never been on a commercial plane. Only a, like a tour guided tour plane. You have to have it plugged in. Move it, I don't, do I? Oh, I thought you were. Uh, um, taking it over here, aren't I? 
Yeah, I thought you were just coming close right here in front of me. That's oh, fine. Where am I going? That's fine. That's fine. Where do you want? Just right here is fine, man. They can stare at the blocks while I sew them. So I'll chain piece three at a time. That's that farthest one. That's this one. And that's this one. All right. So I'm just going to finger press until it comes time to need to actually press. This whole entire project is basically finger press. So I'll put these two through, making a small four patch. I think these are only one and a quarter inch squares. I cut these off camera. These were cut three, four years ago, five years ago now. <laughs> I've been working on it for that long. <laughs> it's one of those projects I just pull out when I pull it out. Um, yeah. It's not one of those things that I have to get done kind of deal, you know. <laughs> I just work on it when I work on it. Actually, I have no pattern or anything, so it's all me. I'm just going to be making it all up anyway. Everything that I do from here on out, so... Okay, so this is the farthest block again, that's the middle, and that's this one. All right, so now I'm going to finger press this, and I'm going to turn it where my black is facing up, and I'm going to add my black onto one side. Oops, black facing up, I'm going to put that black on there. I'm going to center, it's kind of hard to see, but I'm centering the point at the center of the block. I'm just going to build around it. This way. Got to make sure that I have my pieces ready for chain piecing. Black goes in the top corner, so that goes there first. I always put the black on first and the color on second. That way all the blocks are exactly the same. And lady said, remember to flap your arms while you're on the plane. <laughs> flap my arms while I'm on the plane? Why would I have to do that? What is that? Is that I'm a flying. funny thing? It's a joke. Oh, like I'm flying. Yeah. Flying also. How flying. big are your triangles? Um, let me tell you guys all these measurements while the camera is close. All right. Just so that you guys know, okay? All right, so here's the block. We have J, which is the small squares. Those R and E. J and E are one and a half inch squares. Oh, they are one and a half. Okay. And then C and H that hook to it are two and three quarter inch squares cut in on the diagonal both times. Then the next round is D and I. So D and I are two and three eighths inch squares cut on the diagonal one time. And then F and A are four and one quarter inch squares cut on the diagonal four or two times because you can't cut it into four duh. you cut it on the diagonal twice really you know giving yourself four squares and then last is b and g and b and g are three and seven eight, seven eighth inch squares cut on the diagonal once and that finally finishes it off with no bias edges so this will be the bias seam right here this is not right here can they even see this little chart I'm pointing at? Yes. Oh, okay. The, the dark yeah. and not the red. Yeah. So it's a snail trail, essentially. So your E or your J could be your color. You only need a certain amount of each pieces. So say you were doing a black and green only. So G would be your black and A would be black and D would be black and C would be black and J would be black. And it would make your swirl. You know what I mean? And then it would be the opposite. Your other E would also be and your H, and your I, and your F, your A, and your G. So it would make a swirl. Here's the numbers in case you want them. Right here, A and F are four and one quarter, cut on the diagonal twice. B and G, three and seven eighths, cut on the diagonal once. C and H are two and three quarter, cut on the diagonal twice. D and I, cut on the diagonal once, is two and three eighths. And E and J, which is your centers, are one and a half inch squares. Just in case you guys wanted to know. 
when you're walking around QuiltCon, are you going to have a special name tag jacket or anything? When I walk around QuiltCon, will I have a special name tag or jacket? No, but you you've seen... Well, it depends on what if it's cold. I might have a jacket on or something. Okay. I, I don't have any, you know, like, thing specific picked out. So you guys know what I look like. For those that are going to QuiltCon, you know what I look like. So come up to me. <laughs> I look the same off camera in regular people clothes that I do on camera in pajamas. <laughs> you might have a Tiffany's quilting light shirt on. I might or might not wear Tiffany's quilting light shirts. It depends on what you know. I'm bringing with me. The weather says it's supposed to rain at QuiltCon. While I'm there, I looked up the weather in advance, so it's the weather says rain. I don't know why, but that square looks too big that I just attached. <laughs> Probably grabbed the wrong one. All right, once this section is done, like this, we're not ready for our next, for the color part. But before I do the color, I need to trim away my dog ears, which is this right here. So we're trimming away right here right here and I was trying not to make a total mess on my machine but if I can just keep it right here One. there's a lot of trimming involved in this you have to trim after every round unless you want these little dog ears on there but I don't so I'll keep that trash can where I can get to it all right so now I'm on my purple is at the top, so I'm going to put purple at the top, or on the side now, because that's where it's at, and I'm just going to line it up in the center. This one has the blue right here, so we're going to grab that blue Come on. off the pile, center that. Again, everything's just finger pressed at this point. And when you get these triangles on there, they're small, but the V right here creates a little section where it hits your needle at exactly a quarter of an inch. And then this one's got purple showing, so we're just going to grab that purple. And you just build around them. Try to keep building around, around, and around. Snip, snip. Finger press out of the way. And then add the other side, which is this like light aqua. Push this one back. And add this guy. Have you ever made anything using a quarter inch finish square? Quarter inch finish squares? Yes. I have one hanging on the wall in my room. Is that that one? Yep. Okay. We'll show them when we move. When Scott moves the camera, he'll show you my quarter-inch finished squares. Yes, my little mini quilt. I'm so proud of all of my mini quilts. All right, so once this is pressed back, I'm going to trim away the dog ears on this section. Because, again, I don't want them in the block. You have videos of mini square stuff. Today. Yeah, I have videos of mini stuff, too, yes. So we're going to trim away all four of these. And then the next, we're going to add black again. The next size. You can see that this gets really messy. So it's nice to have like a little trash can next to you for all this trimming. But again, we're trying to prevent as much bulk as possible. And I make a big mess every time I do this. All right. Now we're on black again. So let me get these blacks pulled down and ready. Since I'm chain piecing them. All right. So my black is now at this top corner. You're always putting it back in that top corner, your main piece. So your E, your C, or H, I mean, then your I. And F, yeah, whatever one it is <laughs> at the time. It's always touching the color like that. 
kind of center it on here. You can fold it and find the center, or you can just adjust it like I do with your fingers. Black. Well, now. And a black for this one. Black on the opposite side now. And then you always know which side is the opposite side with these because it's the opposite of the side that you just sewed on. So you always sew it one side, then the other, one side, then the other. Takes a while to build these. These blocks are finicky. Okay. And you press it back. And then cut off the dog ears. Hopefully everybody got a chance to Google the snails at sea so you can kind of get a general idea of what I'm attempting here without a pattern. Just me making it up. I saw one at a quilt show once and I was like, oh, I got to do that. I had already made the snail trail blocks in a regular snail trail quilt. And I was like, oh, gosh, I got to do this all because of a quilt show. You know, you get so inspired when you go to those things and you're like, I got to make that. All right. So my next piece is only option is to go on its matching side right here. Only option matching side. Oh, and there's no order to all my colors as long as there was two colors per block, by the way. In case you guys were curious, there's I'm just putting them however. As long as there was two different colors in each block. Alright. Press at the opposite side. I just eyeball this, making sure there's like a quarter inch on each side. Sashing part is going to be the fun part because I don't know where exactly to put the color <laughs> or any of that. Or this one, just trim all this off now. Seven. So here's three and then four more after this. And then I'll have a total of 63 to do seven across by nine down. I knew all that. I don't know how many you had left. Yeah, not very many. I'm almost literally done with this project. I just have to figure out the rest. All right. Now we're back to the color black again. I'm going to grab those next blacks down. Actually, I'm just going to bring them all over here because it's making easier. So I'm going to put this up in the top left corner. I'm going to line this up right here and then sew all these on. Side. 
they make a six and a half inch block, but they also make a wonky block. Like these, I, I think if it was done in batiks, it probably wouldn't be as wonky as these are turning out, but that's okay. All of it wonky together will just make a nice flat quilt because it's all wonky, you know? I'm just going to steam press everything when it's ready to be put together, honestly. Then it should be good. You're starting just to the inside of the heat. Huh? You're starting just to the inside at each half triangle, right? Yeah. Each triangle I add goes on the ins, you know, on the next side. So it's starting to create this circle. Okay, let's snip these off. And they're starting to get big enough to where I can just do one like this and then snip the rest as I go. Snip. Come on, just the top one. Thank you. All right. Snip on. Finger press at the opposite side. press at the opposite side it comes apparent which side you're on you know now try to do this with four different colors per block i made the this is the leftovers of me doing four different colors per block and i had to match them up so that all the next snail matched up to the first snail and so on and so forth now that was a challenge and again, that was not a pattern either. So that's why I had so much left over because I did not, um, I didn't know how, exactly how many pieces of what I would need or any of that. So. All right, now for black. So again, it's always at the top. And I'm just going to center it and sew. You probably should press. It'd be nice to have this little pressing station right next to you when you do stuff like this. You want me to iron? No, not right now. I'm going to iron them as soon as they're done. Are you going to post the pattern? Uh, I don't, uh, never wrote a pattern for this. I don't write my patterns, but I have in several videos given you guys the directions to make these snail blocks. But I don't know exact, I'd have to go through and make sure how many of exact pieces, uh, how many of certain cuts and so on and so forth. And that would take me a long time to do because I'm not really good at that. Part. That's why I don't write my patterns. I'm not good at how much I need for something and how much to cut for this and how much to cut for that and so on and so forth. I'm really, really bad at that. So, yeah, it's all verbal visual. Every time I make this, I can tell you guys the numbers again. I've done this in a few so Sundays because this is my go-to project when I 
have nothing else better to do and don't want to start anything. two colors on both of these and then I'll have sort of chain piece let me just take this side off all three of these blocks and since I'm literally right here I'm just going to go ahead and on this last one so that I don't get nothing out of order. So you can see there's one done block. And then I just go through and snip away the dog ears and then it'll get pressed and be nice and flat and square. Okay. Nice and square. And it'll be flat soon enough. <laughs> Pretty. So there's one. Let's get on to finishing number two and number three. And you can see these do get wonky. Look at that. So when I lay my next piece on here, it'll be on this, and it'll that much of it will be in the seam allowance because it's not straight. So you can trim the whole block each turn, or you can improvise like I do, and lay this so you can see it sticks out like that instead you would be laying this on here lining this up like this and you can see that i'm coming in leaving this excess right here to the side you've probably seen that on a few of the blocks already because that's how i do that that way it's nice and square when it's done because sometimes those pieces are just, they're on the bias, so except for this last and final piece, only that final edge is on the bias right here, this right here. The rest of it is all straight a grain. So here's another one. And they will be square once they're pressed with some steam. All right, last one of these seven, and then Scott can put the camera. Take you guys, show you that little miniature quilt with the quarter inch seams, and then put the camera facing me again. Quarter inch I mean, quarter inch squares, yes. That finish at a quarter inch, yes. You know what I meant. Trail. Yeah, that um, no. I don't think I filmed it, honestly. Yeah. It was a client quilt. I might have filmed I probably did because it was a client quilt and I try to show everything. It's going to be like five years ago, though. Yeah. Camera, yeah, it would be a very shoddy camera quality video. All right. So there we have it. Three of them were chain pieced together. So now I have four more to make, and then I will have all of my blocks ready, and I can start doing my other part. All right, so How's your foot? my foot is okay. It is on the mend. I'm on steroids right now for it. All right, you want to move that camera now and plug it back in before it kills itself? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> all right, let's just do one block at a time now. I'm going to take them over here and show them these, but you can talk about these when I get over here. So, okay? Okay. He's taking you over to the little miniature quilt. Those are finished 
seams finished at a quarter inch, those uh, sashing strips. And those blocks finish at uh, half an inch. And the whole block finishes at an inch. <laughs> And that first border is a quarter inch border. And then that second one is, uh, I don't even know what, I don't know, it's probably like a one and a half inch. That's my other miniature quilt, but those ones are half inch squares. It's finished. Still very little. Still finished at half they're inch. They're little, little. Yeah, they're really little, is what he's saying. I don't know if you guys can hear him, but they're very little. That's my last award-winning quilt. That one won second place in a, the quilt fest that I entered. All on its own. I'm not chain piecing now. <laughs> I'm just a uh, regular one at a one at a time. When is your trip to Cebu? I leave on the 19th, and I will be gone until not the tomorrow, but next, Monday. next Monday. So not tomorrow, but the following Monday I leave, and then I come back on the two following Mondays from that on March 4th. So just know in advance, not this next Sunday, you know, a week from today, that will be a slow video here at home. But the following Sunday will be at while I'm at QuiltCon in a motel. So it'll probably just be a Q&A or something hanging out with um, Becca and Mary. So it won't be much of a anything at all. No sewing involved. But if you want to come and hang out, I don't know what we'll be doing. Uh, and then that following Sunday, I will be at Becca's. So I will be in her studio, sewing from her studio. And again, I have no idea what I'm doing. Um, none of that's planned in advance because I don't know what I'm doing after QuiltCon. And so the next couple Sundays are just gonna be slow hangout videos, honestly. Because I have to fly out that next, so I fly out after this Sunday's video, and then I fly out that following Sunday when I fly back. That I fly back that Monday after as well, so I have to get some sleep early both those times. So I don't want to be on late. Plus, Becca has to work, and I don't like to, you know, I don't like to impose on making people have to drive me here, there, and everywhere all the whole entire time, you know. <laughs> So I don't exactly know all the things I will be doing. You said you can just show them pictures of the stuff you bought. <laughs> well, I won't be able to show pictures. I would have to be right there live of anything that I buy. It would be live stream show and tell kind of thing. Because anything else I do will be video footage. Just like I did for the quilt show here you guys the bed turning and the photos version and the video version i'm going to try to do that for quilt con as well i have a 100 percent feeling because I, it just happens every time i go to any quilt show or any event or anything that i need my cell phone for outside of my home not on wi-fi um i don't really get good cell service so the um that's why i won't go live while at quilt con um, but I can, you know, go live from a motel that has Wi-Fi for the motel room, you know. But while I'm at QuiltCon, it's I'm just going to film like I would regularly film a video and edit it for you guys. So it'll, it won't come right away either because I won't be able to do the editing or anything until I'm home.
but you guys will see my version of the quilt con although i'm pretty sure tons of creators are gonna have quilt con videos <laughs> like a ton it won't you be just me so you guys will have an experience from different people and the different things that they do for their videos you know and I'm pretty sure there's going to be hundreds upon hundreds of quilts, so I probably won't be able to get every quilt in a picture, but I'll do my best to get like all my favorites or something or anything that catches the eye kind of deal because there's going to be so much to see. And I also want to be able to spend time with my friends and all of you that's going to be meeting me there. So I'm going to be busy for four days. <laughs> What's the difference between the TL2000 and the TL2000? The TL2000 is, uh, got, um, it's got an, an extra knob on it that lowers the, I, I forgot what it's called. It, it lowers something for stitching and it has a slightly slower stitch uh, speed, but it lowers. It has another knob. Not only does it lift the presser foot presser pressure, but it lifts the pressure. The, lifts the presser foot completely for like free motion quilting and stuff. So that would be what the difference is. Other than that, they're the exact same machine, just like the the TL15, I think is what it is. Um, I don't know the names of all the machines, by the way, guys, but I think it's the TL15. That is also pretty much the same as this machine. This pattern come in FPP? Um, I'm pretty sure they sell foundation paper piecing um, things for snail trails. You could look online. Uh, like I said, if you Google snails at sea, I'm pretty sure there's even patterns for that out there. And they're probably different size blocks and different size everything, you know, than what I'm doing. I'm just doing what I know from a snail trail block. Everything else I'm going to make up because I'm going to try to have it about as far apart as this is. So these little sections are going to be probably two and a half inch parts. There's going to be a square and a square and a square right here. So it'll probably start out with a little tiny square that's an inch. And then I'll build on four sides of that and then build on four sides of that for a finish of a two and a half inch block. And then it'll be a two and a half inch by um, six and a half inch. Piece that goes here, but it'll have um, points on it to create the. I, I can't think what it's called. Peaky and spike kind of thing, or something like that. You know, I, there's a word for it, a name of the specific style of that block. I have no idea what you're going for. So I can't <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's. Um, <laughs> you would again have to look online. If you look at regular storm at sea, it's the same thing, but instead of having um, like a traditional block, you're just putting a uh, snail trail block instead and orientating everything a certain direction. It's going to be a little bit of a challenge because I'm going to use the scraps from all this, you know, so all the leftover little squares. I will be making a square and a square units and so on and so forth. I got to figure out what color they're supposed to be. This will be black, but the points I think are going to be black on one side and color on the opposite side. So that way everything that has black will have a colored star piece, star legs. I like star legs like a here. Sort of. It, it's a long piece with two star legs on it. So it'll create a diamond right in this section. But I think I want the color to be next to the black and the black to next to be the next to the color. And then I think it'll be black, color, color, and then black around the square and a square and a square block. Something like that. I know if you have vision, you can see it like me. If you're a beginner, you're lost as <laughs> lost as I probably was when I was a beginner. Because I was like, um, you know. That quarter shop has uh, paper piecing for snail trail if you guys are interested in it. Um, 
Scott put a link to the Fat Quarter Shop. So all you have to do is go on there and put in Snail Trail and you'll uh, foundation paper piecing and you'll get the things for it. Okay, come on. There we go. All right, so I'm just going to chain piece. Uh, actually, yeah, let's chain piece the last of these. Let's lay it out so that I can do that, though. Um, I have a video on making quilt backing. It's about, I don't know how many videos ago it was, but it's uh, on the videos tab on my channel. It says how to make quilt backing or how to make quilt back or how to piece a quilt back or whatever. All right, let's do this one now. Tell them, well, you got over a thousand videos. Yeah, I have, have a video on it. I have over a thousand videos. There's most likely a video of what you're looking for on my channel. You just want to find a specific video in the search bar on YouTube. You can actually type in Tiffany's Quilting Life and then whatever it is you're looking for. And if it doesn't come up, I probably didn't do it yet. All right, well, it's that one, that one, and this one. Do you have a preference on which way the piece back seams go, horizontal or vertical? Um, it depends on the quilt and how much backing I have to know if the seam is going to be horizontal or vertical. But when I load it on the long arm, I like to load it horizontally, the backing. So if the seam runs, I don't like the seam to run vertically from bar to bar. I like it to run. Yeah, I like because... It gives it a pull and then the sides will sag and the center will be too tight and it'll have like this bump in it if you load the seam from this way to that way. So I, I like to turn it. And if that means if it's directional, that means I have to turn the whole quilt top as well. I will turn the whole quilt top and load it and quilt that sideways because I don't like the seam to run from bar to bar. But I have I've loaded that way, obviously. I've also loaded heavily pieced backs, too, and double sided quilts. So... But when it's just one seam, I definitely 100% would prefer to just have a horizontal, not vertical on the long arm seam. That way it runs with the bar, not against the bar, if that makes any sense. All right. Six and a half inches unfinished is the size of it. So they will be six inch finished blocks. Yep, it's a lot of work, these little tiny blocks. <laughs> This project has taken me like four years to do. That's because I just leave it under my desk and, you know, pull it out every now and then. <laughs> Oh, 
is one of those things. It wasn't a, an emergent get it done kind of quilt. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you guys all have those. The, you know, just work on it at your leisure. When you get bored of doing the 500 other things you're doing and you just want to stop and do that one thing that eventually will be a wonderful quilt. <laughs> Uh, it's going to have sashing and cornerstones. Yes. You're going to have both? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be a square and a square and a square right here, and then the sashing piece right there. Yes. It would be both. So I have to count how many cornerstones I'm going to need and I have to count how much sashing strips I'm going to need because not only do I need a sashing strip this direction, but I need a sashing piece this direction too. So I'm going to count how many I need for that, how many cornerstones I need and decide if I'm going to go outside of the quilt as well. So on the outer edges, if I'm going to do those as like the first border kind of thing, or if I'm just going to leave it. <laughs> I'm unsure at this point how that's going to go. Honestly, it doesn't really matter what I keep these in order or not because the color is literally plainly right there next to me. And I can obviously see it. If it was all the same color, it would be easier, but this is not. They're all different. What ruler with a half inch marking? Um, I have the quilter select rulers that are half markers. Markers about rulers. Three right there? These are uh, five inches, but the quilter selects are usually six and a half, eight and a half, you know, twelve and a half, blah blah blah, and a half. Every ruler has a half inch mark, though. I would be kind of glad when this project is done because then I could start another one of those four year projects. <laughs> I don't know what to do next, though. I want to do another somebody else's pattern, and I have tons that I'm thinking of doing. The one but... with the handle that's removable. That, yeah, that that's one. an eight and a half quilter select ruler, the one with the handle that's do you know where you got the it? suction cup. It was a gift to me from a friend about, I don't know where they sell them, any quilt shop. Check my links. Uh, they might sell quilter select rulers at Sewing shop. Machines Plus. I don't think the local one has them. Um, and or fat quarter shop. I don't know. Some sell only creative grids. Some sell only. You know what I mean. You gotta check check my affiliates. Um, one of them will have them. QBPN might have them. Oops, sorry. I didn't mean to screw with the microphone, guys. <clears throat> All right, next. Yeah, they're the best rulers so far that I own is the Quilter Select ones. I love them.
lady went and bought the bathroom candle shower handles for her. And she said, check out lady looked at her. She got 12. <laughs> <laughs> they probably thought she was going to go over to a nursing home or something and install them in all the bathrooms. <laughs> 12 of them. That's funny. Got to have one on every ruler. I don't, obviously, but then I don't use all my rulers on a norm. And my little five-inch one, I don't need one on this. My little Missouri Star one. You know, and the funny thing is, is out of all of these blocks that I've done, I only messed up one. So the 64th block, because I'm making 63 total, but the 64 was the only one that got messed up. Are these the last of the blocks for the quilt? Then you yep. Start the yep, this is the last of it. And then it's sashing time. Which again, I I gotta uh, I can't start any of that because I uh, don't have the black. So either I need to match up a black from my stash and have like that two tone thing, or I can run to Walmart because I think that long ago is where I bought the yeah. original black. That black right that there one's, is the Walmart black. Yeah, but there might be another one like charcoal black or whatever. In store, that yeah. is the black. Okay. If you do online, it might be different. Yeah. You, you, know, right? yeah. you, you have the black right there. Okay. Well, we'll <laughs> use that black then. I have three yards of it then. I mean, we those. can go down there and see if they have another one. No, I don't. I just know that I can't use the other two blacks that I have here. Like, I have one that's Maywood Studio, and that is like jet, jet black. And then, um, I have one that's uh, uh, Marshall Dry Goods, uh, the whatever cottons, and that one is jet black as well, but it's not as jet black as the Maywood Studio black, and then the Walmart black is definitely a lot duller, which is what I'm using, but it's still kind of darker, but hopefully nobody will notice with all the little pieces that I'm going to be putting on everything. All right, where are we at? Chop all these off. And I mean, I could not do the snails at sea and just hook all these blocks together finally and just have a snail trail quilt, but I want to go that extra mile. I saw it, that's what I want to do. I saw it, I loved it, I'm gonna make it. Well, my version. You could actually test a cornerstone and a sashing once I finish these blocks and see how that's gonna go. Because again, that all has to be made up as I do it. And I have to use the scraps. So if I have to cut down pieces that are already made into something, so it might be a little bit different than most, I guess, because I'm using the scraps of all these sizes. And I'll show you what I mean when I show you what I got left. But we could test it and see how it's going to go. Because I don't want to waste nothing. And then even the scraps from this and all this leftovers after this is made, I will make something else with all these colors again. <laughs> They're really pretty together, aren't they? I think we originally bought like two yards of every color or something like that. 
I have no idea. Or one and a half lot. yards of every color. That was a long time ago, but they do look beautiful. Yeah. A client said, I want something with blues and purples. So this is what I came up with. These colors, at least. A dark gray for stashing. Dark gray for stashing? Yeah. I'm going to stick with the black. That way it has that completed circle look. Like it's spiraling at sea. Thank you. One lady remembers when you started these blocks. There you go. You yeah. got a fan that's been watching that long. <laughs> watching long enough to remember me doing these? Yep. That's, that's a long a, time. It's a while ago. Well, I work on them. Oh, wow. Um, okay. I didn't even see that. Shoot. Well, that happened. It didn't sew in a spot. <laughs> and I put the other piece on top already with no sewing and didn't even realize it. For some strange reason, I cannot see to rip either. What is up with the lighting today in here? It seems dull. It does, doesn't it? Like, I agree with you. Super... On the camera, you look at that, it looks, yeah, it looks a lot darker than it looks here in person. Oh. Either the camera doesn't do it justice or the lighting. Figure out why this didn't sew right here. I'm not out of bobbin because it's still sewing other pieces. That's so weird. Uh -huh. Okay, there we go. Now it's sewed. <laughs> That one already has that last piece. These two have made it. Maybe I should take the camera up and show them each one closer. Because, yeah, mm -hmm. I can do Scott's going to take you guys to see all of them. The lighting today in this room is not very uh, bright. Well, we haven't changed any light bulbs. No. Don't know why. Camera is slowly moving for him to take you guys to see all these blocks. Remember, it's on cotton batting. That's what's holding it to the wall. Just a big chunk of cotton batting. So it's covered in um, threads. And you know what? If this quilt gets done in time, this one has black in it. I can just have that as my batting for this <laughs> and hang up a new piece finally. Anything that has black, I'll use that as the batting because it has all those threads stuck to it. And I'd rather just put the colors that cover the threads than have to pluck all the threads off that gets stuck to it. All right, now for a round of black. And then the last of poker. And then all of my blocks will be complete. And Scotty, you can turn the iron on in about. Five minutes. Iron? I'm, I'm just going to do it real quick. Okay, then I'll turn your iron on. I'm ironing. We're using the old school junk. Well, so far the last four times that I've plugged it in now, it has not turned on. So. It's turning in this week. It don't like you. I know the trick. Hey, it's following in Squeak's footsteps. Although, I still like Squeak better. <laughs> Now that I say that, that won't work for me either. <laughs> yeah, one of the hit, the iron that Scott's been using um, hasn't been dying. turning on for me. It's dying. So now all I have left, pretty much once that's fully dead, all we'll have left is my broken Aliso, which works, but uh, it gets caught on the fabric. And then my um, Panasonic iron. 
and that's it. <laughs> Let me big just... beast over there. Just oh, and my big beast too that I have left still, but just clean. it really needs a good cleaning. If my son Cyrus was still alive, I'd have him take the irons apart and clean them for me. Because <laughs> he uh, loved to tinker. <laughs> he would actually take it apart. That's then, what I would yeah. want him to do. Completely uh, take he, it apart. He wouldn't get it back together. He would have got it back together. He took yeah. things apart with me all the time. He would have done it. He would have fixed it for me. And cleaned it all up. <laughs> yeah. Well, he took that fan apart. Remember when he did that? Yeah. yeah. He got it together and it was working amazing afterwards. The thing yeah. worked for how long after and didn't even make a squeak? <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> all right. All I have left to do is add the colors on all of these and then. I can press them, yay. And then I'll put them on the wall and we'll attempt to see what I can do about this whole sashing nonsense that I'm gonna be doing and cornerstones. What type of design are you for this pattern? Um, this one might get waves or something, quilting wise because it's already going to be busy and I don't want to make it too much busier. So probably waves or swirly waves or something would quilt on this really nicely. I'm not going to go custom with it and quilt in each individual block and sashing piece and all that stuff. Nope. I'm just going to do an all over edge to edge of uh, something. Free motion quilt, whatever I feel like it on it. This one's light purple. And last purple. All right, you can plug the iron in. Besides black, how many colors are used? Ten colors. No, eleven. Wait, yeah, 11. But the gray is not going to be in. Well, actually, yeah, I'm going to be using gray, too. There's 11 colors then, yeah, because there's gray as well. Uh, 12 if you include the black. All right. Sorry for the zoop zoop sound, but my phone likes to uh, go off while I'm live all the time. It does. <laughs> oh my goodness, come on. These little fabric pieces are falling in this little area right here. One reason why I don't like cutting right here next to the sewing machine, because then it gets all built up right here with all these little cutoffs and stuff end up all over the place in the machine bed but i'll clean it later i'll just take the vacuum to all of this <laughs> okay seven blocks made Woohoo! and it's been an hour and i lollygagged it first so how of that what are the bright things in your bobbin, your bobbin oh right? these are called the bobbin buddies so they it's a little hooky thing that goes on i wish i could find them again because i would totally get more but i haven't been able to find any more of these um online because i like these ones so at my embroidery machine i have a different kind but it's usually for the spools these ones are for the bobbins it's a silicone little hook thing and they're amazing i love these things but problem is is i can't find them anywhere anymore they have all sorts of other kinds, but these ones are the best because of the way the silicone, it sits better on these. So it keeps them from sliding around when I have it on here, the bobbins. It keeps them from sliding around on the table. All right, let me press these blocks real quick, and then we're going to grab all the stuff and see what we can do.
I have many binding videos, many, many of them. I've done binding in many so Sundays and just because I had to do binding, I came online just because I needed to bind something. I mean, you name it, there's lots of binding. Press this last piece, and then, well, it's either go higher than I can reach. You want to put these up there? Oh, we're going to go up to the top with it? Yeah. Well, they're going to stay on the wall until this is complete, so. Have you done t-shirt quilts? Yes, I've done t-shirt quilts. Um, you just quilted two of them. I just quilted two of them. Week. I'll, I'll show you. They're, my client hasn't picked them up yet. So here's a Harley Davidson one. This one I actually went right through. Usually I don't go through the um, vinyl or whatever the stuff is on these shirts. But this one I went through it um, on all of them. Which was fine. You just need to have a good sharp fresh needle. And that one's all Harley. And then a second one I did for the same client this is her other harley quilt this one i did not go through the oops t-shirts i actually just echo around specific areas on them that way it doesn't bunch up but so i quilted around the snake you know and like a little bit through him but i don't actually quilt directly on it i'll quilt around the pictures so you can see but yeah, and then on the back, what it looks like when you quilt around them is it gives you little designs of whatever that picture was. Um, there's lots of uh, Harley symbols <laughs> on the back. So here's the one right here, of the Harley symbol. You can see it quilted <laughs> as I just go through it, you know. But yeah, I quilt t-shirt quilts all the time. This is a common thing that comes to me when uh, I do long arm jobs is, but I finished all my work for this week, so don't ask for long arm jobs till after I come back from QuiltCon, guys. <laughs> um, because I'm kind of closed for now until I get back. Because I don't want to quilt this week for anybody. Uh, you know, you did a t-shirt quilt for your grandma, and there's and a video on it. Start there's a video, it's called An Angel's Hug from start to finish of a t-shirt quilt, and I also did a baby clothes quilt that's called uh, what is it called? What is it called? I can't think at the moment. But I did a baby one, and I also did a sorority girl t-shirt quilt. I do lots of t-shirt quilts. That's a really common. Clients come to me the most for t-shirt quilts. And I absolutely despise t-shirt quilts. I don't like to do them. But I do them because I like to do them. I like to just screw around with them. So, And then long arm quilting, people bring them to me too. But they're just wonky to do. All right, so here was my messed up block. You can see if you screw up, that's what happens. Can you see where it's messed up? It looks good. Yeah, so I can rip it out. I can rip out the center square and turn it once, but I have all seven blocks. Oh, you put those up wrong. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't know there was a right wrong. Yeah, all the blocks come together and all the color comes together. Huh? Black comes together, color comes together in the next one. This. Oh, okay. I just have to turn them. I yeah, can do that. That one that. will be that way. I can do it. I can do it. This one will get swapped with this one because the colors. Okay, read the thing. You use stabilizer on your quilt. You I do. use stabilizer only on t-shirt quilts. You do comment. I was reading. Oh, I don't want two grays next right to each other. At that one. Stabilizer. Yes, I use stabilizer on t-shirt quilts. So, the scraps that I have left to work with. Okay, now, they all turn. Color, color, black, black, right? Yep, I'm going to move all those colors around, though, because... They're well, that's touching. on you, then. All right. Hey, hey, hey. Are you moving things to where I can reach it? So, this is all the black I had left. And then there was this in my quilt room, in my little uh, quarter yard, not quarter yard, uh, yeah, quarter yard pile. 
And then all of these I had on a piece of paper with their, you know, sample color, which was a little scrap off of them all, hooked to with all the sizes, wrote down of everything that I need. So all of this whole basket is filled with a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven colors, and then black. So technically, twelve total colors to make this project. Now what we're going to be doing is what I have left. Let's pull this out of my basket. By the way, these baskets can be found at the Dollar Tree. They make great baskets, but if your room is covered in dust, don't put black fabric in them. Because <laughs> every time I took, every time I sat it down under the desk, it was covered in dust. <laughs> So all my blocks were, like, the last time I pulled them out, I even showed you guys. Ooh, I was like, wow! So I started keeping fabric over it. All right. What kind of chair do you have with your back issues? I don't have a special chair do for my back and hip issues. And honestly, every single chair I have tried in this room absolutely kills my back and makes my hips worse. But I deal with it because I love to sew. So, and I even tried like this chair we got at Walmart. It's supposed to be whatever. Um, it's just a pillow. So there's just a regular household pillow on the back of the chair, but it doesn't sit right for me. So I just took the pillow case and you literally put the pillow on the front side and just cover it like a pillow, you know, over the chair. And I absolutely still can't stand it. But you know, and then I put a towel on the bottom because I get all sweaty because it's a fake leather chair and it just drives me nuts. Even kicking back in it like this, I can't sew like this. I have to sew like this. I can't be back. It just drives me nuts. All right. Scrap wise, let's see what we got going on here. I have all of this. So these are cut rectangles and squares of leftover stuff this was probably the one and a half inch piece you know after cutting all that i even still have the pin with the color number so here's color 10 color 9 color 8 7 there's a lot more of six they all have about the same though five four Three, two has a lot left. So color two has a big chunk of that left. And then color one also has like three quarters of a yard almost. I mean, that's 27 inches. Yeah, three quarters of a yard. Look at that. Comfort, comfort pillows don't help. Not sitting in this chair, no. And then here's color 11. I use them in the other room in our other chairs, and it's probably someone that asked that was here, right, Debbie? Yeah. No, they're in the chairs that are in my bedroom, which you've seen. All right. So the idea is I really don't want to have to cut all this. You know what I mean? I kind of want to just leave these whole. And work with what's here and what's here all these pieces so that means i need to at least put all this back in here how big will your snail quilt be when it's finished i don't know how big it will be um i don't know <laughs> they're six and a half inch squares right now so they're finished at six plus the sashing will be two and a half which finishes at two and it's seven across by nine down. Do the math. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I can't do that in my head, guys. Um, it's going to be this big right here, hanging behind me. It'll be twin size. All right. Is this a pattern you dreamt up? No, I just saw a quilt at a quilt show that was a Snails at Sea. And I said, oh, I can make that. And 
well, that's what I'm doing. I'm making it. All right, let's try to make one of these blocks. So we need to figure out. It needs to be a two and a half inch square. We're going to start with these one and a half in the middle. But I don't know if I need to start with black or not. Black color black. Black color black. I don't have a computer next to me to look up a snail tree. <laughs> All right, let me just cut a one and a half inch square uh, strip off of here real quick. Actually, you know what? Let's cut a two and a half just to see how big that really is. We're going to see something here. I could. Just humor me. Could do this, like that there, and then. Gosh, I'm not two and a half, is it? Let's get a two and a half inch square off here. When is quilt con? Quilt con is the twenty. Let's see. I leave the nineteenth. It starts that Wednesday. That next Thursday, after nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two. 22nd through the 25th? Well, I don't know. Oh, I don't know either. Oh, yeah, I don't know. Okay, I'm going to try something real quick. Just to see. Do you have special goals for it? Like meeting certain quilters or something? For QuiltCon? No. I I just meet who I meet. I'm at last, the last QuiltCon I went to, I didn't go to Atlanta, Georgia, but the one before in Phoenix, Arizona, I got to meet Jenny, Misty, and um, Natalie Doan from Missouri Star. I've got a color between there, black between there. No, it has to be a square and a square. I'm just uh, thinking out loud, I guess, guys. And then it would have to be a square and a square. Two and a half by six and a half. We're going to see something here. So I'm going to cut a two and a half by six and a half inch piece. Figure out how to do. These legs with what I have available at least. Because remember, I don't have certain sizes available. So we're going to do six and a half here. I'm getting two pieces real quick, and then what we're going to do is I'm going to waste fabric by hmm, can't use those or those. Mm -mm. I have to use these pieces. Let's see how far down they go. Can I get them on there sideways? I'm not going to make a complete diamond. Let's try a smaller one. And I can do that. Stitch and flip on this size. Okay, give me two seconds to do this. Stitch and flip up on that size. Stitch it right there. Doesn't seem tall enough, but we're gonna do it. We're gonna try it. We're gonna go for it. This one. If you do a two inch and finish stashing, it should be around 58 to 74 inch. All right. Just a minute. We're gonna try something. All right. Thank you for doing the math. Now I just gotta know exactly what angle to put it on. It's gonna stick out. Pretty far. How about I stick it from inch to inch? No, that's not going to work. <laughs> Let's go the next. No, can't. Can't do it that way. Throw it on that way. It's not going to work. I'm thinking out loud here, people. 
thinking out loud. I'm gonna find the center. Let's see if I got it right. Fold it in half, find the center on both sides, and that's how I'll line it up. There we go. So let's be smart. Let's be smart about it. Fold that and that. Nothing over the center. Right there. All right, let's try this. Away the excess, away the excess. No, it doesn't really matter on that. Because it has to be the right size. So there's going to be a lot of trimming to do this. It might not be pointy enough. I might have to uh, that doesn't even come down the same direction as the other one. We want pointier, but we're just doing this for now. Not really wasting much because I'll just use it in something else. I just love it when I make stuff up. <gasps> you need some fabric, cut marker, thread, whatever. My fingernails are a little too long. I don't know. That's too far. That's a total guess, but we're going to pretend that it's right. Okay, turn that to size. There's one side. Now let's see if we can do this other one again. What I could do. Yeah. I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to come down right here <laughs> and cheat. Now put these on. Perfect, right? <laughs> I'll put one on the side and one on the other. That's only going to be very different, but this is probably not the one I'm going to do. I want sharper points. Size. Quarter and a corner. What do you mean? All right. Line that up on the six and a half. Cut across that top. What if you didn't use dashing and butted them up against each other? No, because then it. No, it, it just makes a snail trail, and I want snails at sea. I want that secondary design. All right, where are we at? I need to make four of those. So imagine four of these 
around. I really don't want to waste making four, but I could just cut all those like that. Let's do it again so we can create this star. Let's grab four different more colors. One. I already did that one. Let's do two. do is I'm going to fold this in half and cut off right there. And I think they'll just be a little on the wonky side. So I'm making a, a bullet and then I'm just going to put these on it and then trim it the size. As long as it lands at six and a half inches. All that matters. Oh, that's a really long one. Okay, let me press it then trim it because that way it'll be a lot flatter. Quarter inch on each end. Oh yeah, that's plenty. I think that's what I'm gonna do. I think I'm gonna do these wonky like this. So I've already started, and it seems like something that would not be too hard. And then this will go like that. Okay. Does that look dumb? Or should I have this be? No, let's make two more. <laughs> yeah, if you guys are going to join the Facebook group, please answer the questions because we get spam often in there. And, and nobody's been answering the questions lately, so... That's how we know if you're spam or not. All right, so I'm going to fold these in half, find my center, choose some pieces, and then cut them. Oh, that's nice. It didn't crunch it. I just need to get it back in the hole again. Now it's in the hole. Go by by. So again, they're just going to be wonky. They're not going to be exactly the same, which I think will give it that really cool look, which will be different. One. And we'll choose four colors for that. <laughs> this lady said, she says everything about not watching men interacting. <laughs> yeah. Especially while there's a lot of water. That's a good comeback. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to watch men chasing their balls either. All right, one. I love it. Two. 
two. Okay, let's add these on here. We're going to see what this is going to look like. Might look really cool. It might not. Not even sewing them exactly the same either. <laughs> I'm kind of just whatever sewing them. They're almost the same. So technically I just need to make a bunch of these units, chain piece all them together, and then trim them all at the same time and so on and so forth. That way they're all just different. That's if I go this route. We'll see how it looks on just the one area. This is what it's like when you make up your own something or other. To match up what? The little corners of your sashing with the snail colors of the adjoining block. Oh, so like have green be green here, purple be purple here, this the uh, turquoise be turquoise there. Yeah, that might be a lot of work. That might be a whole heck of a lot of work. That might be more than what I'm doing now. going to keep the small black square or do color on the inside? Okay. I'm thinking of snowballing it to cor the color, the corners to be color. Right, put that one there. Get that block down because it's kind of... I didn't lay them out exactly, obviously. <laughs> And these are heavy pointed stars too, because uh, there's a lot hanging over. But again, they're wonky, so I'm not really cutting an equal amount off of all four sides. There we go. So 
how about that? Does that look cool? Oh, I like that. Let's switch it this way. Okay. I like the other way or that way. Well, see, this one matched. If there was a green one here, so hold on, let's just, or this color right here. So this is what it would look like if I matched those. Um, hold on, let me grab a teal real quick. Oh, no, see, I can't match that one. I would have to really work at it to make them all match. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'd rather them all be completely different, you know? But I could also do a square and a square, so... I could also have it be one color, like this, where it's all the colors, or plain black, or a square and a square. So let's build a square and a square with... This black. Oh no no no. Let's use a black square right here. We use the one and a half in the center. We'll grab four of these little guys. Imagine each one. Oh yeah, it would be way too much work. Three, two. Yeah, I think it looks better without them matching. Also. Hold on. The little triangle Three. Now. Yeah. Um, what do we have out of here? We'll do this one. Four. <clears throat> oh, let's go grab some more than I needed. Okay. Um, this is going to be hard because uh, they're oversized. Let's just snowball a black one. Big one. I'm gonna hang it over by a quarter inch like this. Hold it back. Oh yeah, that works. Hang that. Hang that. That. Give me two seconds to make this little guy. Hang it over by a quarter inch. Put him right there. Hold it back. Next one. Hold it back. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's the goal, is the secondary design from this. But instead of being super pointed, because I'm using my scraps up, it's just going to create a smaller star. So you'll see in just a minute. Let me finish making this. And we'll see what this one looks like. With it. Obviously, I probably have to piece them two sides at a time and cut the black into a specific size square to start, but it's not going to start with the one and a half because that would mean I can't use these little scraps. So we're going to turn this into now a two and a half inch square. Square it up. Just the side. Side. There we go. Now let's put this in. Instead of this black, we'll put a square in a square. No, turn it. No, I don't want matching colors on top of each other. There we go. No? How about doing the stars where the black paint is and then plain black where the colors go? So plain black where this meets and then colors 
where the colors come together or just a solid square. It's questionable, you know, but I like the design that's created. I think I'm just going to continue. I'm going to cut a bunch of two and a half inch strips and do that with it. It's going to be a lot of trimming, but. A lot of them are like the plain black. <laughs> yeah. I like the plain black in the middle too. I don't need to do a square and a square. So I just put plain black cornerstones and then just make these sashing pieces and it'll have a star in every one i'm still not too sure because of the design of this without them being long star points if it's going to create that if it's not just a secondary design it creates like a third it takes your eye into making it look like it's circular which it already is circular from afar It doesn't need to be like everybody else's either. This is my own creation of using it all up. I think that's what I'm going to do is just make a bunch of these. Yeah. That's going to be hard because I got to trim all those corners off like that. <laughs> and the stars are going to be wonky. They're not going to be exactly the same. But the square in a square doesn't look right. Plus it would... I have to make sure that it's not matching the colors that are in each one of these either for the star points itself. But well, I'm gonna clean up the scraps because I'm about done. I just wanted to see what this looks like. I like that. I think that's what I'm going to go with. Just going to make those. But I don't want to match them either. I want these to be different. You know, I don't want any to match. And I definitely don't want two of the same colors next to each other. So I'll have to move a lot around, you know, and make it work. I actually have to take this off of the wall because Thursday is a doing? project that goes on the wall. What will you do in the vertical sashing? The same thing. This is the vertical sashing. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be the same. So then on the colored ones, it would look like this at the colored section. Yeah. Bless you. See, a lot of dust in here. Yes, there is a lot of dust in here these here now and then put the black there as well so that's what it looks like the opposite way where the color as long as I make sure that no two colors are touching so that way you still see the star in that section so I can make per I can put the blocks exactly where I want them to stay but I have to take this down because Thursday is uh, we're still working on the log cabin so now this has to come all the way down again, which is fine, though, because it gives me a chance to make all those pieces. So, and again, I do most of this off camera, but when I feel like it, I do it on camera. But I do have to cut the black. And you can't tell that it's two different blacks. I can up close, but from far away, you can't tell that there's two different blacks. So that's going to be good. <laughs> I think that's going to look awesome. Yep, that's what I'm going to do. Because I could have put black legs on one side, kept it black on one side, and put a color there and only have stars periodically where there's black, you know, and then no stars where the colors come together. But I kind of like it a star every time the color comes together. What do you think, Scotty? Yeah? I was reading. Yeah. I don't know what you said. If this was just black all right here, this whole section when these come together, but when the, the blacks come together, there'd be a star in between every black section, you know, only. And then just have these be plain black, you know, right here. That means I would only have to piece the star legs on one side of every single one of these. But then I wouldn't have snails at sea. It would look like something else. It would be like stars at sea or something. I don't see it like you do. Yeah. 
you know, you have to show me each one, and then I can tell you which one I think looks better. I can't see it like you do. I have to actually see it. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. That's a decision. Let me cover that black with black so you guys can see what I'm talking about here. So, in the design like that, it won't matter. That's why it doesn't matter. In the color section, it would just be. Candy. If you use a different black, it's not going to matter. It doesn't match. It's you're just doing a different black. Yeah. I'm trying to make this work. Covers two star points. I'll make it look black real quick. Here, cover that up where it's only black in that section. Black strip. There we go. So, what if it was all black only and stars only came out in those sections? Because I could leave the bottom half and only piece on one side. No, because then it would need this guy only center and then all black around it you know so anytime color comes together get where i'm going here every time color comes together it would have i i can't get this to stay stay and this guy would go here and i get rid of that Because that would be me piecing only one side with star points. And then I'd have the, you know, secondary. It would be three different designs. It would be stars when the blacks all come together. And then it would be square and a square with the black when the colors all come together. That way the stars are only here, here, or anywhere that black comes together, here, so on and so forth. So there'd be a star in every. I'm just worried about the same colors matching up. You know? Because I don't want to have this color next okay, to this so color. Guess what? Time's about done, and you're yeah. not going to work on this again for who knows how long. So maybe you'll change your mind. <laughs> yeah. Because as you said, we're pulling it all off for Thursday's thing. And I don't want you working too much this week. Yeah. Because the next two weeks after yeah. this week, you are going to be killing yourself with all the walking around you and Becca are doing at Quilt Con. So how about this? You answer a few questions and we call it a night because you're done. Yeah. All right. And we will come back to it. That's the best thing to do. When you get too lost at something like that, you come back to it. Yep. Take we look. will come back to it. All right. That's for now, I shall clean it up. All right, guys. So any questions, comments, concerns? I know this is like a whole thought process here. I'm kind of leaning towards only having the stars in the black side and having black with the square and a square on the other side. That way I don't have no two colors touching. I'm worried about this color touching the same. You know, when I make all those pieces, I really have to pay attention to create that look, you know, that we're going for here <laughs> or that I'm going for, you know what I mean? But yeah, that's what I got. That's what I'm doing. Slowly but surely, <laughs> I shall prevail on this quilt. This is an easy cleanup because I kept everything on, on these pieces of paper. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. I have a lot that I can do. I could also try really sharp point stars and see how that looks too. I mean, the sky's the limit with this. And again, I'm in no rush to finish this project, but I'm finally done with the snail block. So <laughs> that I'm happy about. I want to put these back in the dark section again because I really liked them on the black side. Before I go. I like them that way, only having it in the black.
I'll ponder that one. <laughs> All right. Any questions? Not really, no. If All right, guys. Your way, whatever. Would be great. You guys will love everything that I do anyway, so. <clears throat> I won't be able to write a pattern for you guys, but that's, you know, I can give you the block and that's about it how to make the snail block. Everything else is just kind of make it up, have fun, and, you know, use up scraps. For me, using up scraps. This would look really good as a scrappy quilt with lots of the, the different fabrics. Oh, I could do that too. Someday if I do it again, I'm going to do it because I have so many scraps. So many scraps. All right. Well, if there are any questions, I'm just going to go ahead and get off of here to go oh, kick my feet up. Oh, tomorrow morning, I will be on some time for a mail opening. And then Thursday is breakfast at Tiffany's. We will be continuing with the log cabin. Um, yeah, because we still have more blocks. They're all in different stages because we were trying to rush through it last week because we had a prior engagement. But um, yeah, that's it. That's all this this week will be a mail opening. And then Thursday, and then I'll see you again next Sunday. For probably like an hour, but then I, we're gonna head off to bed because we gotta get up early and drive to Vegas so that I can sit in an airport for hours upon hours until my flight. <sighs> and then sit on a flight for hours and hours and then transfer to another plane. And <sighs> anyway, you'll love be, it once you get there. Uh, once I get there, it would be fine. Although I did look up Becca. the weather at Becca's house and it's supposed to be 30 degrees the night that I show up there Whew. okay are you going to be hanging out outside <laughs> i'm not hanging out you outside. go from a heated airport to a heated car to a heated house yeah and then you go from the heated house to the heated car to wherever yeah hopefully i won't freeze my little tushy off <laughs> it, it's just like summer here do i stand outside in 120 degree heat no, i do you do <laughs> i don't i go from an ac house to an ac vehicle to an ac building back to the ac vehicle back to the ac house I don't even like to go outside to get the mail in the summer here. It's I too do. Going hot. <laughs> I like the warmth. It feels amazing on me. So you will be fine. You will have fun. Yeah. You're going to have so much fun, you're not even going to know. <laughs> All right, guys. I'm going to go have a, a wonderful rest of the day. Enjoy the rest of the football game with your husbands, families, sons, whoever. <laughs> Your brother-in-law who's hanging out. I mean, just go I mean, have you fun. Like football too. I mean, if you <laughs> like football, enjoy it for yourself. I'm gonna go and kick my feet up and not watch football. I'm gonna watch something on TV. <laughs> Bye, everybody. I get that. Bye. Turn it off. Bye, Bye now. You're gonna keep saying Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Hopefully, Bye. Sumper will be up in the morning. Hopefully, Sumper will be up in the morning. Yeah. To He's say still hi. sleeping. <laughs> Lazy cat. Anyways, bye everybody. <laughs>